Assalamualaikum. Good evening everyone. And here we are today again with our dear Ustaz Mizi Wahid and we're going to be talking about treating kids right. Betul tak Ustaz? Yes. Hi uh, Nadira. Thank you for having me once again. And Assalamualaikum to everybody tuning in. Um, I'm excited for today's topic. Ustaz, so sebelum kita start kan, kita korek rahsia Ustaz sikit lah dulu. Mm -hmm. Rasi, korek, korek rahsia Ustaz kan? So, you know, tell us about the time when you found out that you were going to become a parent, a father. Oh, wow. How was that like? No, oh. when was that and how was that like? I think it was pretty memorable, Nadira, because um, my wife and I, we actually had trouble find, uh, getting the first child. Okay. All right. We now have four, but uh, <laughs> the first one wasn't easy. And we went for checkups. We met specialists. Um, kita amalkan lah macam-macam doa and parents need advice and everything. And so, um, just before we conceived, we got really sad and heartbreaking news because the specialist we met said that you, you're not going to have a child anytime soon. In yeah. fact, the specialist said it's impossible for you to have a child anytime soon. So you can imagine lah, like two hopeful young couple, you know, yeah. uh, trying to conceive and then being told that kind of news. Um, yeah. it, broke, it broke our hearts lah. Can imagine, but, yeah. But we never stopped praying for the best. And so we prayed really, really hard. And then suddenly, kan, Nadira, one day I was at uh, Singapore Expo. I don't know whether you know what is Singapore Expo. It's like one of the mm -hmm. big convention centers. It's like, it's like a... Kasana PWTC is it? What do you call it? The the big oh, yeah. event. We yeah. have many big uh, KLCC sekarang. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah. So something like that. And I was on stage with one of the Malaysian penceramala. We were having mm. a forum perdana or something like that. And um, tiba tiba habis je that forum. I got a phone call from my wife. Okay, and I was still on stage. I remember I picked it up. I was still on stage. Uh, and then she said, "Dear, I think, I think we are expecting you." <gasps> What? <laughs> she, wow. just got, she just did the pregnancy uh, check and and then she said, I think we are. Like what? Baik baik nak ada makan minum dengan pencerama dari Malaysia ni dengan apa semua organizer. Terus saya minta balik. You know, I was like, I'm so excited. I want to go back home. You know, to meet my wife. So um, I remember that uh, it was excitement in the beginning, of course, because it was hard for us uh, to conceive. But I I think eventually it was a mixture of. Um, you know, anticipating the arrival of the child, mm. uh, wondering how we're going to be as parents. We, all, we were also strangely thinking about how the child would be like, look like, you know, macam -macam lah. we were thinking of all those things. Were there fears, of course, fear... Uh, I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> but the fears were all sorts, of, maybe because first child, so your fears <laughs> are like, eh, hopefully anak ni keluar sihat, you know, tak ada sakit, -sakit mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, keluar sempurna and, you know, from those kind of fears all the way to the fear of whether you can be a responsible parent, you can be a good parent, you can be a fair parent, and all of those questions. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, those were the, the first few thoughts lah, I can remember. That was indeed memorable for you. Lah. Alhamdulillah, sekarang dah empat, Ustaz. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, you know, after your fourth child, right, hmm. what is it have you learned throughout those years of parenting what what is it what what has changed uh, you know what is it that you've learned when you when you ask me what have i learned after four kids the honest truth is that i almost wanted to write a book about parenting you know because oh okay so yeah you're telling us right now we're going to be expecting another book <laughs> no 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 <laughs> not anytime soon maybe i need another 10 years i think what's best is if i experience how it's like to raise a teenager pula, you know because mm. I know you've had that experience. Oh, and, yeah. And Still the, challenges are, yeah, the challenges are very different, correct? Right. Than when anak masih kecil. So I think I need to go through that phase first. I cannot say that, you know, I know what parenting is until I've gone through that. Um, mm. Barulah you can say that I can graduate, right? So to speak, I graduate. But a parent will forever be a parent. Uh, and that's the real truth. If you ask me for lessons, too many. But yes, this was the angle that I was thinking of my book. It wasn't really going to be a full-blown parenting book, but rather I wanted to talk about how indirectly my children were teaching me a lot of life lessons. Mm. You know, instead of what I 
mm-hmm. what I taught them or what I educated them with, I felt like my children taught me a lot about life. Okay? And it's very subtle. And I had to sit down and think about some of the things they said and some of the things that they did in order for me to connect the dots and say, hey, actually, kan, this one is very profound, you know? Actually, this one is very much like some of adults want kita macam gini, you know? Like, there's so many interesting things that I discovered. Um, so, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. InsyaAllah. You know, bila kita cakap pasal parenting and, and you know, children, uh, we're going back to this, the topic that we're going to be discussing today, treating them right, right? Treating children right. And uh, today, I think we've got parents and we've got our caregivers, our carers as well, who are also... Uh, tending to other people's kids, but their kids are kids, right? So we mm-hmm. want to take a, a, a slant on uh, from a parent angle and also basically just treating kids in general because I think, you know, children in their early years, in fact, sampai, you know, even their teenagers, right? They're constantly looking at their environment, people around them to shape them, whether we realize it or not, right? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, usually as parents, you know, we're always talking about you know, we want our kids to be the best, uh, doing everything right, being respectful and things like that. Tapi kadang-kadang kita sendiri pun, we're not sure whether we're doing it right or not, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's talk about your experience lah, kan Ustaz? I know you mm. you do a lot of, um, uh, you know, people come and see you asking for advice and things like that. And so, what kind of, uh, you know, challenges that, that you usually get from parents? What are kind of questions do they ask you? I think most of the questions, Nadira, to be honest, they're lebih kepada disciplining the child. Mm. I think this is one of the big ones. Um, parents find themselves in a dilemma because normally it's like this, lah. one parent is more the disciplinarian and then the other mm. parent is the more relax and chill the fun one uh. i think mm. we had this conversation when we had jovian and nina and we had a brief yeah uh, we mentioned this briefly about yes. main peranan apa, kan? the good cop uh-huh. bad cop thing so uh i think today there is a big conflict um in uh young parents because when i say conflict my are conflicted on the inside they don't know what is the best way sebenarnya, to actually discipline their children um, because they're getting mixed messages. Mm. Um, there are people telling them that they need to be gentle and kind and all loving mm. uh, and all embracing. And then there's another, you know, group of uh, people telling them that, no, you need to show them tough love. And that's the mm. only way that they will learn uh, and be strong in life, you know. And mm-hmm. so they're like, which one should I do? Which one should I go to? Um, mm. That is the biggest problem. I also see parents young... Um, um, they are second marriages hmm. uh, or third marriages and then you know lah, they are the step ch- stepchildren yes. and then how you know how much can I uh, get involved and interfere with your parenting hmm. styles am I hmm. allowed to um, educate and discipline your child if he hmm. or she does something wrong or do you want me to stay out of it like there's so many intricate issues uh, in and around um, those kind of families as well uh, yeah. because it's not very straightforward. Yeah. Mm-mm. So that's another type. What else? Um, um, yeah, I think generally that, that is one of the more common things that I'm getting lately, Nadira. Mm. I, I, like, I like that you, you know, brought up about... Uh, um, marrying into into a new family and your your second marriage your third marriage mm-hmm. or something like that can and you come into a family and uh, uh whether the child is being able to accept you and and in fact mm-hmm. you know you come in you don't know whether should i be a parent should i be a friend should i be like an auntie or an uncle it's mm-hmm. a constant struggle uh yeah. but before that i wanted to maybe ask you right uh because you did say you know a lot of uh times parents come to you uh and even with jovian and nina we talk about the conflicting uh roles ataupun you know mm. trying to identify you know which which one which part should i be playing and whether mm. there is a difference between the role of a mom and a dad okay what do you what do you think ustaz ada ke difference dia dekat situ 
I, I, I feel like it's not really a gender issue. I don't mm. think it's a mom or dad issue. I think it's just about in every household, there must be certain fixed functions and roles that need to be played. Mm. The only question is who's going to play which role? Two, yeah. mm. You know, um, there cannot be a household where nobody disciplines anyone. Like anybody is free to do whatever they want. I don't think that can work. And I'm not saying that, oh, you mean Ustaz, there needs to be somebody who's fierce and angry all the time and yelling at the kids and, you know, beating. No, no, I'm, not saying, that. I'm saying when you, you know, when you think of the word discipline, mm -hmm. you probably have a certain image in your head and a certain mm -hmm. definition in your mind. But it doesn't necessarily mean what I'm meaning right now, you know, what I'm intending to mean right now. Because I feel like um, you there needs to be somebody who is in charge and in control. And that person needs to be firm with the rules that they have set and to, um, to hold on strongly to the principles uh, of that particular household. At the end of the day, there needs to be somebody in charge. I mean, to summarize. And that person in charge can say, okay, I want to be the, the person who, you know, spends quality time with them and we, we play games and I you know, make them feel good. I compliment them a lot, right? Okay, lah. so it doesn't mean that it's a complete, absolute 100% that's the only thing you do. And the other person, 100%, the role is completely just disciplinarian. I think mm. it's very fluid in the sense that there are times when you need to be firm and there are times that you need to be showing a lot of affection and kindness and compassion. Um, and, and you know, I, I, I notice that my wife and I, we, we tend to switch and, and it's very subtle. So, Kadang-kadang, you know, it depends on Nadira. Like some days, you you are very tired, Nadira, and then mm -hmm. one small thing also, you can you can get angry. So when mm -hmm. your partner notices, okay, the thing are not in a good mood. I'm gonna be the good one now. You know, the auto mm -hmm. auto take over. You know, mm -hmm. like, okay, what's mm -hmm. wrong? You know, don't do this. You know, this is why daddy's angry. This is why mommy's not happy. Can you you take turns explaining? But there must be somebody who is willing to talk to the child directly. Um and trying to reason with them because mm. to me children and especially the young ones they are always open to reasoning um of course teenagers want it a lot more but mm. when they are kids that's when you can really uh, nurture them and plant the seeds in them to help them yeah. understand that anything we tell you you can't do is actually for your own good you know uh, mm. this is a sign of us loving you and that's why we're doing this and it's wrong when you do that to other people. And there, you know, there's a there's a lot of opportunities for you to do this. So don't miss out on that. You know, they have an entire childhood. Don't miss out on that. Um, so somebody needs to take on that role. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's uh, you brought up a good point, right? I mean, usually kan macam uh, being mothers ni selalunya mothers lah yang jadi bad cop ni kan. But you know, if you have a, if you have a, a um, apa nama ni, a complete family, so you have a mother and a father, then you can play that that uh, alternating role, and you could mm. have somebody else to come in and uh, maybe you know talk to the child to make the child understand because it's always a constant fear of the mother ataupun siapa yang play bad cop kan mm -hmm. yang anak tu nanti ambil hati makan hati tak suka dekat dia because like you know I don't, cannot lah you know I go to my mom mesti bising-bising-bising kerja that kind of thing right so you have somebody else to support you and reason with the child and whatnot but what if yeah. you are a single parent right and mm. uh, you're the one playing bad cop Both. and how, how do you then reason that out with your child? I mean, I, I salute every single parent, to be honest. Uh, I cannot say that I know exactly what they're going through because I've never been in that situation, alhamdulillah. But, you know, um, I salute them because you know that you have to play both. Um, and if there's one way that I could imagine it happening is that when you need to be firm, you be firm. And then let it let everything cool down and then when the time is right you engage with them once again um sorry did, did you lose my audio because my mic is up sorry yeah. no i think we can hear you can everyone can you... hear you start okay i'm gonna remove this mic completely so that i can just speak directly okay. hmm. i think we're good yeah um what was I saying just now? 
uh, you were talking about taking time to apa nama ni um, to, to talk. So you're talking about single parents. Oh yeah, single parents. Yeah. So um, let's say lah, your child does something wrong, you address that problem firm as a parent mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. some something that's wrong is wrong. You can't like have two ways about it lah, so that your mm -hmm. child is clear because children are not at the age yet. For them to understand subtle nuances mm -mm. and when they are older maybe you can explain to them that there is black there is white there is gray but as children sometimes what they need to do is what you can and what you cannot do first and then explaining mm -hmm. to them why this this should be done and why why we must say thank you or you must help a friend in need why you must share and then this one you must tell them why you must not lie why this is completely wrong right it, it mm -hmm. needs to be very clear because or else it will be con it will confuse the child um mm -hmm. So once you've done that part where you make everything clear and you may, you know, because you're so exhausted as a single parent, so tired, and then your child throws a tantrum, you get angry. You may raise your voice, right? You you may scold mm. them. But when they're done crying and and then you you are done feeling guilty, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> then you go back, then you go back to them. And then you, you know, you hug them and you remind them that you love them. Um, children always need to be reminded that they are loved. You know, you cannot let, let them cry um, and cry all the way to sleep on their own because you don't know what they're thinking, you know. Like, mm. you know, like you know, after getting scolded and their mom or their dad never even visited them to check how they were doing. It's it's very sad lah for the child kan? like oh my mom really doesn't like me because those are the main things children are so straight straight and 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 so pure that they only think in in binary lah much I'm like again I said black and white and so if mm. somebody calls me it means that they don't love me right mm. so, so you need to quickly reassure them that that's not what it means so mm. that then um they are able to see it from a different perspective and angle inshallah yeah mm. well, i guess that it, it like in any relationship kan uh, you know when you get angry or you you know lash out whatever it is right uh, you terasa hati then you know obviously the other person will go out and merajo or something like that but then you come in and, and talk it out again i guess with mm -hmm. children so sometimes sometimes because we feel that they're children they'll brush off or mm -hmm. you know uh, and, and we don't make that mm -hmm. to, uh, yeah they, they forget about it and then sometimes kita pun macam it ter, ter apa apa orang kata get absorbed with other things sampai macam kita dah ambil masa yang lama sangat so bila dah lama mm -hmm. sangat then we tend to like okay you know, let's uh, take it as it is or whatever it is, let's continue lives as normal. But that in itself actually affects a child, can kind of start because it they, yeah. they build those things up within them, right? It, it leaves a scar, you know. It could be mm -hmm. a small scar, but mm -hmm. when, when they have enough scars that they can count, like, wow, my parents did this to me so many times already, then mm -hmm. they will create their own story. And the story is, my parents don't love me. Or my mom doesn't love me, or my dad doesn't love me. So we need to be very careful not to get to that point. Uh. So mm -hmm. when we talk about tonight's topic, treating your child right, to mm -hmm. me, treating your child right includes being hard on them when you need to be hard on them, meaning draw a clear line and a clear boundary that they're not supposed to cross. Okay. If to me, treating them right isn't just about oh, all sayang sayang, loving, compassion um you know you can do whatever you want to me that's not treating them right because you are doing a disservice and an injustice towards them because when mm. they go out into the real world they're going to think that oh it's okay to do this it's okay to do that mm. we see a lot of i'm sorry to say but we see a lot of failed parenting and all you need to do is you should tanya guru guru sekolah tanya teachers who are teaching high school secondary school you know they're like wow you know these kids they they have no respect for the teachers anymore they mm. curse curse very freely profanities it's not mm. an issue anymore they mm. disrespect the opposite gender you know mm. the boys um are very crude with their words talking to girls you know about mm. girls and so on and so forth so mm -hmm. and when you try to talk nicely to them and you try to correct them they question you back who, who do you think you are trying to correct me Huh? Mm, mm. 
And then the, the weird thing, Nadira, sometimes when we call the parents in to talk to them, and this is a lot of teachers may experience, right? they say mm -hmm. the parents defend the child. Mm -hmm. So then, and then the, the parents say, it's not my problem, it's your problem. I send my son or my daughter to you. You are the teacher, you're supposed to teach them. But mm -hmm. they are not supporting at home. Mm -hmm. And the child is completely confused. The child feels entitled, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, no, my parents will always back me up. The teacher is always wrong. Mm -hmm. And yet, parents expect the teachers to do their work, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And then, you know, I, I pay the fees or whatever or any whatever. But then, you are Allah, you know. So, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, really, <laughs> it's quite problematic. Um, I always find it very ironic, eh, Nadira, mm -hmm. when I know you've heard of this statement before. People say, Oh, anak-anak zaman sekarang ni, ya Allah, teruk. Tak senono, kan? Ada mm -hmm. ada anak-anak zaman mm -hmm. sekarang ni macam gini, macam gitu. They, mm -hmm. You know, children nowadays, they are so, so disrespectful. Children, kids nowadays, they don't know how to appreciate people. Kids nowadays, they are um, so outspoken and, you know, they don't care about what other people's opinions. To me, right, when I hear those statements and I look at those people and I, I want to ask them back, when you say kids nowadays, whose kids are these? It's our children. It's your children. Yeah. We are the ones in charge. We are the parents. So if you're complaining, we are part of the problem. You know? Mm. So it's mm. how we it's how we have been treating the, them. Sorry, it's how we have been um, raising them that mm -hmm. needs to be reviewed and revisited and see what can I change, what can I improve. It mm. all starts from there. I guess I guess there's so much uh, belief in you know raising a child takes a village right that sometimes we depend too much on the village but we forget that the child is actually first and foremost developed in the whole own house home, jadi kita yeah. kan selalunya letak the blame on influencers sekolah cikgu and things mm -hmm. like that right but I think it's also kind of challenging because you know, the being being a, a working mom myself, right? Um, I, I I struggle to to actually you know have time uh, with my mm. kids and and you know of course they're mostly influenced by the things that they consume. You know, in terms of media lah, uh, kawan kawan and things like that, right? Mm. Mm. And um, and I I probably miss those those times when I should be. Uh, you know, coaching them and teaching them or, or learning. And sometimes I come back, you know, just lashing out because I'm just too tired, kan? And they're yeah. absorbing all this. So in in that sense, kan Ustaz, macam mana? Is it like too late or what can we do about that? I don't think it's, I mean, parents should never give up on their children. Huh? Mm. No matter how old the parent is, no matter how old the child is, as long as they are our own children, we should, never give up on them because i think one of the things that causes the child to also become more and more perhaps rebellious mm. and you know giving no care about life their studies their career is when they feel like their parents have given up on them like mm. the one people the one person that they hope would never give up on them give up on them mm -hmm. and then they start to have this story again it's all about the story they tell themselves they say you know I'm, I'm on my own. Nobody cares about me. Nobody believes in me anymore. They may mm. use a different term, like nobody loves me, nobody cares about me, um, mm. nobody's concerned about me. But really, it's because they know uh, their mom or their dad has given up on them. So mm. my advice to all parents who have, who feel like they missed the boat, huh? like, mm. oh, the entire childhood I did, I wasn't really there, I was so busy. You know, you whatever you have, use it. If you have their teen years, you know, be there for them, be a friend to them, uh, be a companion to them, talk to them, check on them, ask how their day is, ask about their friends, you know, ask about their problems, ask about their teachers, like anything, whatever you think you want to bring up, just be a good listener and and then show that you really genuinely are interested to know about their, 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 their day and their well-being. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that creates a new connection. Mm. You know, uh, interestingly, right, uh, before that, before that, I, I also want to um, say hi to everyone who's watching, Ina Amina, Rukina Kangi, Iman Fidaus, Hazwan, uh, Razlin, Fairoz, um, and I would like to just 
bring out a comment from Firoz, uh, who says that she has taught in an all boys secondary school back then. Many of them uh, were from underprivileged families. Also, they don't have father figure in their lives. Uh, or they have male adults in their family that can't become the expected role model. So I guess this goes back to, you know, uh, not not having that complete family, kan? So yeah. so if if in that sense, kan, in a family structure that is like that, and you don't have a role model to actually show you how you know, being a man should be, being a, a woman should be. So macam mana, how do we handle things like that, Ustaz? I want to say thank you to Fairuz for bringing that up. I'm... I've done actually one or two workshops on that topic about mm. men, for men. Uh, yang interestingnya, bila I buat program for men talking about all these things, women semua yang datang, you know. <laughs> Mungkin orang dah frustrated sangat that their, their men are not present, their men are not active mm. uh, and not leading as a role model. Mm. Uh, before that, sorry, I tukar cuci mata because I think that glass dia macam apa, yang the blue light punya protector. So, uh. Semua nampak makin gelap. I think bila I tukar ni macam nampak tiba-tiba terang sikit. Tadi tengok asal muka macam ngantuk je tadi. Macam mata hitam macam apa. Sekarang you baru you dapat muka. I ada no roof tak. Tadi nampak kolam dia. Alive tiba-tiba. Okay anyway. So Fairuz, thank you so much. So I, I completely agree. Kesian. Um, those uh, children, if, if we analyze them properly and see she's a teacher so she knows. When you talk to these kids, and you don't talk to them as though you want to scold them, you want to uh, uh, get them kicked out of school, get them keen, get them, you know, if you talk to them really as a friend, you know, because you're a teacher, eh? nak tahu, hey, how's everything at home? Eh? Hey, uh, when you're at home, who's, who's normally around? When you start asking this and when they feel like they want to open up, you will hear all the stories and it's heartbreaking. Kat rumah tak ada orang, you know, uh, mak kerja, bapak kerja, nobody's at home, right? And so, why would these kids want to go home if nobody's at home? You know what I mean? And so then they go out and do other things with their friends and they end up mixing with the wrong group and things like that. Ataupun, um, they, they come from a broken family and then you hear the mom um, is living uh, alone uh, and then maybe at a boyfriend baru and then he doesn't like the boyfriend, the mom's new boyfriend and, you know, like, hates the father for leaving the mom and then you know like it's it's hard you know so, so you know real teachers know not to judge their students simply by looking at oh they need they need to do work class they need to lari cabut class they need you know selalu discipline issue if you read beyond what you see eh, if you try to ask and inquire and be inquisitive you will discover that there is always a reason behind every action no child is like that by default, no. Mm. There's always a reason why they, they behave that way. And mm. we need to um, read up more uh, about this from books and, you know, learn from, um, you know, podcasts or whatever courses available. And the other thing is to just talk to these kids. The parents sometimes are a bit more resistant to share because they're malu. But if mm-hmm. you if you ask the kids not into buka ai or whatever, it's got nothing to do with that. Just to understand so that you know how to treat this child properly. Because some of them, they just feel completely unloved. There's no love at home. Mm-hmm. There's no father figure at home. So they don't know how to behave correctly as a man. And, and that's where mm-hmm. all the, you know, they mistreat women. They talk in, in a very crude manner to other girls in their class. Macam, there's no good example at home. So, so right? how can you build that role model, Ustaz? How how can they find that model? It's not easy, but it's possible, you know. Okay. So, I would say, you know, as much as there are a lot of these issues, I've also seen successful stories where a single mother raised uh, a few good gentlemen, who then all of them became doctors, la, lawyers. La. We, we, all, we sometimes hear the success stories and it's nice mm-hmm. to hear. So I guess one thing we can do is to, to read their stories. La. Think, how, how did you do it? <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. so that's one thing. Um, but I guess the other way is for you to, to talk about these things regularly. You need to like drill it, you know, until they get it. Like, you know, to be a man, you need to 
be kind, you need to be thoughtful, you need to be compassionate. To be a man, you need to be not just strong physically as what society expects you to be, but you need to also be um, strong emotionally. Meaning what? Meaning you can control your anger. You don't just lose your tempo and anything and everything. The Prophet said the strong, the truly strong are the ones who can restrain themselves. It's not just the one who can fight, you know. Society mm -hmm. tells you that, oh, if you, you're a man, if you always get angry at everything, you know, uh, and don't forgive people easily. But I don't think that's what a true man is. A true man is somebody who can be calm and be patient, you know. Mm -hmm. So remind them of this. If you can tell stories of significant and prominent um, individuals in history uh, that they can read about, that they like, that they're interested in, or religious figures, tell them these stories so that at least they can see some kind of an example uh, instead of just attributes being thrown at them. Typical are they an individual that they can follow, they can mm. read up on, then it makes that a lot easier for them. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I agree on that. And I guess, you know, uh, we found our next topic, being a man, <laughs> building that moral model of a man. I think it's very challenging to be a man in today's world. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that being a woman is easy. It's really as hard. But I think because the roles tu dah, dah macam apa nama ni, uh, dah grey. Right? Because, you know, we're playing both roles these days, right? There's no gender, uh, apa nama, segregation in, term, in terms of roles these days. But I guess there are certain characters and certain uh, build up that you need to, you know, uh, include lah in the development of your son and your daughters, right? But but mm -hmm. I want to bring back uh, the conversation to you know we're we're talking about love. You you mentioned many times that the child constantly think you know whether my parents love me or not. You know, love love love. You know, back in our days, go start. Mak bapa kita parents lah, conventional parents lah. Eh, selunya, uh, they show love very differently, right? Uh, in my own family lah. Eh, my parents. Tak ada lah nak cakap pasal sayang ke, love ke, datang-datang, peluk-peluk, tak pernah pun Ustaz, right? But these days, you show love differently, right? Mm -hmm. So how how have you seen, you know, that that difference uh, of yesterday's parenting or showing love and, and how is it now? And what is it that the kids are actually expecting when they say, you know, I don't feel love or I want my, my parents to love me more? So in, in your experience dealing with, with families, right? How, how do you think about all this? It's a very interesting question, Adira. You know, as, as we all probably would agree that, I wouldn't say all, eh, but maybe 80%, I dare say, of Asian parents from 70s, 80s, eh, um, not very expressive, like you said, right? When it comes to love not very expressive, they don't know how to say, they don't know how to show, they don't know how to hug, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, but they show love in a different way. Sometimes they show love by being hard on their kids, as we said, tough love. Sometimes they show love by um, insisting that the child studies really, really hard mm -hmm. and then get really good grades. Um, mm -hmm. It stresses the child out, but that's how they show love, mm -hmm. right? That's how they show love. Um, so, I'm I'm interested to look at how all the adults who were raised during that time end up being today. Because to me, at the end of the day, it's really about the outcome, right? If the child is good today, okay. Lah. But I, I see a lot of broken men and women today, you know, uh, because they've never actually felt like their parents cared about them or proud of them or were pleased with them and their efforts and their successes. So there are a lot of broken adults, men and women, um, due to that kind of and that style of parenting, right? So we fast forward to today, 2021, mm -hmm. um, new generation of parents. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost a complete opposite. Man. Right. Mm. Dulu kalau you minta mainan, mungkin dalam 10 tahun dapat satu eh, mainan. Sekarang <laughs> setiap minggu minta dapat agaknya. Kan? I'm guilty. I just posted photo tadi. I, I bought something for my daughter again. But um, I, I'm also very scared because, you know, like to me, not getting what we ask for immediately teaches us patience and um, 
uh, apa ni, uh, it, it teaches us to to endure uh, mm. the tough times and work hard to get for what we want. Mm. Today's generation, it's all about instant gratification. Mm-mm. And this is why, if, if we go all the way and analyze, like, why, why do young professionals nowadays, they don't stay very long in one organization? Mm. Because they are waiting to be rewarded quickly. Mm. Right? I had some interns yang baru dua tiga bulan that expect to be rewarded, that expect to be given a contract yang like a full-time staff and they're still studying like, I'm like, oh, wait, what? You know, like, mm. zaman, zaman, jangan cakap zaman parents kita, even my generation pun, like, we knew we had to work really hard mm. before we got to a point where, okay, I deserve this, you know, mm. I've worked hard to get here and and I, I can start asking, you know. So, everything from how fast when we click uh, on our phone, it, the, the the website opens up. Dulu zaman kita, uh, bila internet baru start in uh, mid-90s, dial-up internet, ingat tak? Ting-tong-ting-tong lah. Setengah jam nak start. <laughs> And then bila tiba-tiba uh, dah, dah finally masuk, my mom angkat telefon, terus mati. Kan? Kena start balik. So, so we we learn the hard way. We probably uh, because of the circumstances we're in, uh, had a little bit more patience. Um, today the kids are different, and um, I guess we need to balance it off a bit, lah. We cannot always like show so much love to the point where our kids learn and gain nothing from life. They don't know how to be patient. They don't know how to appreciate. Um, things in the long term, everything is immediate, immediate, immediate. Um, you know, we live in a world where Shopee can deliver in one or two days, you know, like but then today I see it in the screen, the next day it can be at my doorstep. That's how fast things can happen, you know. That's the mm. generation we live in today. So, mm. um, with that, all of that in mind, I think if we try to still instill in them the importance of uh, being patient that could go a long way for them in the future. I rasa dia akan amat berharga because when they uh, become professionals, they run their own business, they choose to do whatever lah, even on social media, um, you need patience in order to grow and to to be successful and to make a difference. So if I if if I can ask you to maybe, you know, give some pointers, right? And you wrote a book uh, entitled Upper, You Are Loved, right? Mm, uh, of mm. course, it's from a different perspective. So how can we tell our children that they are loved? Maybe some points from you. Um, even though I, I did say about, you know, buying them gifts a lot is not such a great thing. But once in a while, it's nice. It doesn't have to be something expensive, something big. Um, you know, when I when I travel a lot, like when I did last time, uh, bila pre-COVID, and sometimes I feel like if I just buy even a small little souvenir, a little earring mm-hmm. for my daughter, you know, mm-hmm. a small toy car for my son, um, mm-hmm. from my trip, it's gonna make them feel like, hey, you know, my dad remembers me when he's away. Mm-hmm. That small little thing it costs maybe seven dollars, costs you five dollars. But mm. they will come hugging you and say, thank you, daddy. Thank you, mommy. Like, mm. those are the things. It's it's about reminding them that you remember them. Mm. Your, I think that's, that's, the, that's the word. Yeah. You know, reminding yeah. them, right? Because I think yeah. that will give a greater impact knowing that you are, they are on your mind, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Um, there are many other things when it comes to showing your children that they are loved. Uh, when when the children start to be able to express and articulate their feelings, mm. you need to be a good listener. You mm. need to sit down with them and genuinely listen and show that you care, not mm. just trying to get it done and over with. So, but sometimes mm. we are guilty of that. Um, mm. Our children is talking to us and we are on our phone. Mm. Children talking to us, we are watching our Korean drama. <laughs> you know, the, the long-term impact is quite big lah because the child mm-hmm. will then feel like my parents don't really care 
mm. my parents don't really want to know about me and my life and my my passion and my hobby and my likes and dislikes they don't you know mm. and, and probably one day after many many times of doing that one day tiba-tiba you datang you nak tanya they could mm. look at you weird like apa ni you know like why are you suddenly interested there must be something and they're gonna be suspicious mm. um so you need to slowly crawl your way back in so that mm. they can um you can rebuild that trust in them mm. first and, mm. show, and and prove to them that this is not just uh for show and eh, for pretend uh mm. this is real you want to really know uh, how they're doing Oh, Ustaz, tadi kan you cakap pasal listening, right? Genuinely listening to your child. So, listening takes a skill, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, kita nak, you know, nak listen to our spouse, our colleague, our employee, semua pun will take skills and what more listening to a child who might be talking about the same thing over and over again tu kalau dia kecil. Kalau mm-hmm. dah besar tu dah sampai teenagers to to get them to talk so that you can listen is something else right yeah, but yeah. but i just want to uh, you know uh, drill down on that right so you talk about listening but it's not just about listening but it's also about uh, your body language you know how how you uh, attend to your child uh, because all that you know bila you cakap masa how do you genuinely listen right listen mm. dengan hearing and listening are two different things right um and and also you know how can parents be more aware of their own behavior and speech because sometimes we can be struck or like you know ah, kan? so things like that right so how how can we be more aware of of all this because the the child is absorbing and, and looking at us very good question Alira. i think one of the best ways to do this is for both parties son and uh father or you know daughter and mother to to put all distractions aside okay mm-hmm. and you could imagine this the obvious one is you lie down beside them before they go to sleep um both of you put your phones away this is the most obvious one and just mm-hmm. just stop even if it's for 10 minutes just stop um mm-hmm. if it becomes a routine after a while the child may look forward to it because maybe one most days you don't have apa-apa nak cerita mm-hmm. but when finally they have something to share they know that tonight my mom is going to lie down beside me i'm going to get a chance to tell her what happened today in school that's what you want to hope for you know um so that's an example of putting things away putting distractions away another way is for the both of you to actually go out together of course when it's safer to go out together with no other distractions with anybody else uh there so kalau you are a few kids maybe you can just bring one kid out not for like anything um elaborate just lunch or you know tea desserts just go out for a quick um night bicycle together or something like spend a bit of time together and then the child will feel that this is more um more genuine i i what you need is to develop routines develop habits where the child knows that this is going to happen and i'm going to have time with my parent you know uh, i'm going to mm-hmm. have time to talk to them to share with them to get things off my mind to get things off my chest these are the things mm-hmm. that a child is always looking for and if if and if we as parents do not establish this as a routine and as a normal practice mm-hmm. one fine day and this is something i i'm even scared to say one fine mm. day when they have something to talk about something that's bothering them something that's very um it's an urgent matter it's a big problem guess what they're not going to tell you they're going to run to somebody else mm. and the thing is we have no control over who they're going to run to what mm-hmm. if it's not a good person what if it's a person with bad influence Mm-hmm. what if it's a person who's going to show them towards the wrong path you know mm-hmm. why and then you wonder like eh tapi kenapa tak bilang mommy and daddy you never made yourselves available like you were either yeah. too busy or you were not interested like mm-hmm. so it's, it's really really scary when you think about what could happen if we don't try to 
establish that bond uh, soon. Hmm. I, I think that's so important kan? because sometimes, you know, parents pun kita kadang-kadang rasa frustrated juga. You know, when you want to talk to your child and your child simply don't want to talk to you or they just don't have anything to tell you. And hmm. nothing significant happens that day or they're not in the right mood and and then you feel off or you feel like, oh, you know, he's not interested to talk to you. Uh, mm. But I guess, you know, establishing that routine, whether you talk or not, you're just there for each other actually develops that sense of, you know, my, my mom's here, my dad's here. Mm -hmm. I can go to them anytime, right? I think that's a very good uh, takeaway. I am parent mm. banyak tahun ni pun, I, I feel, <laughs> you know, I think I've been missing on that. So, yeah. Um, you don't need long, you don't need long, you know, much like practice, hmm. you know, establishing this routine. Even if you spend five, ten minutes every night with your kids, one hmm. of them or two of them, that's hmm. enough. Yeah, that's enough. Hmm. So okay, I just wanted to uh inform our viewers today. If you have questions to ask, please do share with us in the comment section. I'll be happy to uh pick it up. Uh if not, you'll be hearing questions from me. <laughs> I see, I see one question here from Intan. Ah, from Intan, yes. So Intan asks, can a child feel unloved if we kept giving gadgets to them? Not because we don't want to engage with them, but because of the work from home situation. That's a really good question. Hmm. Um, <laughs> Ramai parents mungkin can relate to that. Lah. Um, uh -oh. you, you have a meeting right now. Macam I sekarang ni lah, I had a, this session. I know one of my son, I book on TV for him. It's not a gadget really, lah, but I want for him a show that he wants to watch. So that will keep him occupied, you know, because my wife is not here right now and my helper is not here. So I just, you know, leave him there. Would it make the child feel unloved? I don't think so. As long as when you are available, you are really fully present. Okay, mm. Intan? You don't have to feel guilty if you have to resort to that on some occasions. Mm. As long as when you are not doing your work from home stuff, no meetings, no anything, make sure you really are looking at them in the eyes and talking to them and responding to their questions. You know, my, my son who's six, ni, dia daripada dulu, banyak tanya soalan. Dia non-stop tanya soalan, you know. Like, of course, sometimes penat juga, but I will always make it a point to still respond to him, you know. And, you know, I, he say, uh, no, that, why is it like this? Yes, we say yes, yes, dear, yes, sayang, apa dia? <laughs> like just, just responding. Then they know that okay, my dad is always interested to know what uh, what I'm saying. Um, so in turn, sometimes we resort to that as long as it's not too much, too, too extreme. Kena creative lah. Macam sometimes the reason why I sometimes buy other stuff like board games and everything is so that they don't spend too much time on screen. I buy for them books. Tadi baru order buku, a book set for him because he likes certain books. Belikan, just to balance it off so you're not always overly dependent on that. Um, but again, when you're working, you have no choice sometimes. Okay, you resort to that. But when work stops, go to them. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Intan, hope that answers your uh, concern. I think many parents are also sharing that same concern. Uh, Ustaz, tadi you had mentioned kan about, uh, you know, if you have children, uh, you have a few children and you want to give attention to one and you take one out kan. So, you know, sometimes when you have smaller kids, right, they don't understand that mm. uh, by treating them equal, it's not really giving the same thing, right? It's It's giving different things, different kind of attention and things like that. Tapi kids being kids, they don't really understand if one gets like this and one gets like that. And they could probably be comparing if the mother, mommy actually loves Abang more because she takes him out, right? Uh, she doesn't take me out or things like that, right? So how do you actually balance? Macam mana nak strike that balance to start kalau anak ramai, different age group, uh, equality to them. They don't, they don't understand, right? So how, how can we manage that is it communicating or what do you that? Well, you asked me all the difficult questions today. I um, asked like, because I, I, apa nama ni? I, I experienced this. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think how I do it with my wife. Mm. I think kita bagi bagi juga tau. Maknanya, mm. if, if let's say this weekend she's bringing kita the four, so she, she brings two of them out next weekend. I, 
and I, I'll bring the other two out, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. So that they don't ever feel like, it's very different with, let's say, the both of us, husband and wife, we bring one child out or two children out. The other two will feel like, eh, mm. why? Why are we excluded? Mm. Um, of course, everything can be explained, but mm. what if you say, okay, next week your turn, sekali next week something happened, next week at an emergency mm. work, mm -mm. how are they going to feel? Like, oh, mm. mom broke her promise to me. Mm. They're going to feel sad, they're going to feel disappointed, they're going to question the next time you make a promise again. They're going to wonder whether hmm, betul ke? Tanta tak jadi lagi, you know? Uh -huh. So, um, I think if you can divide and conquer, as they say, uh, that would work. But if you can't, then tak apa. You know, recently I spoke to a couple. Interesting, we're talking about this. I was talking to a couple and I nak nikahkan lah kan. Biasa, I selalu hmm. interview jurang. So, there's this one lady, uh, I tanya dia, how big is your family? She said, oh, kita lima adik-adik. Are you close with all of them? Oh, yes, we are all very close. I said, huh, that's interesting. Because I don't mm. always hear this. Yeah, and, oh, uh, tak rapat lah jurang lebih tua ataupun oh, mm. kita sampai umur 12 tahun, 13 tahun, remaja semua dah tak rapat lagi. Oh, mm. bila abang kakak dah kahwin, dah tak rapat. Macam, but then this one, I said, oh, kita semua very rapat sama sekarang. Like, we spend a lot of time together. Then I asked, I was curious, I tanya lah. So, what is it about your parents' way of raising you that you think made you this way? Because I tanya ni pun supaya dia uh, implement the same principles when they have their own children one day. Mm -hmm. So she said, uh, my parents always, bila keluar, kita keluar sama-sama. My parents mm -hmm. tak pernah, uh, you know, separate us. We're always together. So I think there is no right or wrong. I think mm -hmm. you need to explore. Um, maybe you are already in a family where everybody's not really talking to each other. Maybe mm. if that's the case, you're not gonna, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, spend quality time with a few, maybe, right? But if you think that everybody's still very young and you can nurture them this way, where we always mm. do things together all the time, mm. then, then do that. I mm. juga yang cara ni tak berjalan because, you know, they say, ah, I don't know lah, every week my parents paksa kita keluar sama-sama as a family atau nak keluar apa, you know, kan ada macam itu juga kan. So you need to like pay attention to every single child and how they react and the feedback that you're getting from them to hmm. to know how you want to make those adjustments lah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, I guess, I guess they kena you know, cuba-cuba lain cara lah but I, hmm. you know, it boils down to again communicating and really taking time to 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 apa to talk to them uh, and, and to listen to them kan i guess mm. the attention to yang dia nak sangat tu is basically that lah you know to know that you know they have somebody they can really rely on and things like that kan tapi we start kan macam sekarang ni kan i wanted to just you know bring um, you to this issue that uh, i think banyak parents yang yang really affected with the covid-19 situation and you know how families uh, dynamics or even their lifestyles have changed because of this COVID situation, kan? And uh, I do have parents who come uh, to to us and, and telling us, you know, how do I how do I show to my child that I'm I'm working I, I'm working towards it that you know, ataupun dia punya own frustration for not being able to give that kind of lifestyle that they've had before. Uh, COVID actually, you know, affected them. Ada yang kena pay cut, ada yang hilang kerja and so on. And, and their child pula duk tengok, you know, social media and getting all this kind of influences and, you know, having that kind of peer pressure, terasa kecil, terasa tak dapat, kan? So parents are struggling with that that uh, feeling of not being able to do enough, sometimes even feeling like they're they're failing or they failed their families. And the children mm. are probably thinking, you know, um, uh, why is it that my, my mom and my dad cannot provide for me? Why is it that, they, that I can't be like everybody else, right? Mm. So in that in that kind of situation, can how can you advise parents who are going through that 
and how can you advise us to maybe you know how do we take time to explain to the children or maybe even take this time as a learning time for us to create that kind of respectful punya situation will we lose their respect ke macam mana ustaz okay before i answer very good question give me five seconds eh? i nak yeah. to talk something else. all right Hope you are all still with us and if there are any questions you would like us to ask, please do share with us. Kalau tidak, we hope that you're still enjoying our conversation tonight. Okay, we'll start. You're back. All right. Sorry. So, um, yeah, I think, I don't know. Um, this one can normally, Nadira, I hear a lot of men saying this. Mm. Maybe now it's it's also affecting women because women, kebanyakan pun are the breadwinners of the family or they go out to work too. And I say it because a lot of men can, when I ask them what makes you happy and what makes you unhappy, they always say what makes me happy is when I can provide for my family. What makes me unhappy is when I cannot give my family what they want. Mm. And I think because how the world has changed so drastically with the women be, being a very uh, big, uh, a much bigger uh contributor to the economy you know a mm. lot of more women working starting businesses like you you know mm. um now the feeling summer like both men and women both husbands and wives mothers and fathers we all feel the same thing we all feel like ah, i'm I'm still get trying to get there but i cannot give yet my child or my children what they want and you know like for example there's this one thing that your child really really wants but you cannot give it to them mm. right uh, because you don't have the means yet, or they want to, you want you to bring you, they want you to bring them to a show, um, mm. but you don't have the time. You cannot take leave from work, you know. So, you do you feel bad? Yeah. Does it feel horrible? Yeah, to a certain extent, because you love them so much, and all you want to do is to be able to give them what the things that will make them happy. Mm. But unfortunately, that's not always going to be easy. Mm. Uh, I feel like whenever you can't because of the the circumstances we're in now, COVID, uh, because maybe you lost your job, your salary got cut in half, I think that these are really great um, and, and teachable moments. Mm. Use these moments to teach them a powerful life lesson. Instead of just feeling sorry for yourself, and then apologizing to your children. Um, I think you can apologize, but then explain that life isn't always something that goes, you know, in an upward cycle. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. there are many downturns. In fact, it's a roller coaster up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. Help them see that clearly at a young age. And mm -hmm. then they'll appreciate it more when times are good, when you finally can give them something. They're gonna appreciate it ten times more than seorang anak yang parents dia hari-hari kasih benda benda dia nak, you know. Mm. You see the difference. Like mm -hmm. children will show less appreciation if they get, they always get what they want. Mm. They will show more appreciation when they rarely get something that they want. But mm. don't just do it with no uh, explanation. Like I said, you know, you feel bad, you feel sad, you can't provide for your family or you can't give them the extras that they want to enjoy, use that as a teaching moment, you know? Like, mm. okay, um, you know, in life, it's always like this, ups and downs, highs and lows. When mm. when everything's good, we can enjoy together as a family. When everything's hard, we must support and love each other still as a family. Mm. Uh, and hopefully, they, they pick up on some of those lessons. They may not understand it immediately or mm. appreciate it right now. However, I've seen enough uh, adults today who say as they're accepting an award and say thank you or you know as they do reflections on social media do can mention uh the, the, these life lessons mm. uh, one of my dear Ustad friends mom passed away and then he wrote a beautiful reflection um so you hear all of these things come out you know so mm. you don't give up too soon and think that oh you know we can't give them everything that we want it means mm. that we are a failure. It means that we're we've completely disappointed them. It means that we're an embarrassment as a as a parent. Maybe my children are 
embarrassed to have me as their mom, their dad. Mm. No, I think please um, understand that it's it's not your fault. Number one, and number two, um, please educate your children with the right perceptions of of life. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ustaz. You know that that helps me too. Um, because sometimes kita parents kan kita pun ter ter compare lah diri kita dengan orang lain juga kan. And sometimes oh, you just feel like inadequate, not doing good enough, and you worry so much about what your child would think. You know because mm -hmm. dia pun ada dia punya pun benchmark and things like that kan. So I guess that's good. I mean I think we should be taking this time to actually teach you know not just ourselves but our children powerful life lessons like you mentioned. Even if it doesn't happen to us, I think things around us should be conditions for us to actually learn lah from others as well kan. Uh, but before we end tonight, Ustaz, can we're talking about, you know, building or, or nurturing, developing uh, respectful children, right? Treating mm -hmm. them right and eventually we want them to be, you know, respectful kids, you know, happy kids, successful kids, you know, things like that. But when we talk about respect, kan? Uh, when I was growing up, so I, I'm a little confused whether it's respect or fear that I have for my parents. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Tak tahu ni, respect I think for most of us, probably it's more fear. Okay. okay. So so now, right, if we want to start building or uh, nurturing our children, um, you know, with respect. So respect, as you know, is earned, uh, not not uh, given. So untuk diorang pun, you know, you've got, a, especially when you have teenagers, or oh, you have to earn my respect. So so what is that context of respect that we're talking about when we talk about, you know, res we want kids to be respectful, we want kids to be respecting us. Um, and, and, you know, whether you have any, you know, based on experiences, ada tak certain techniques untuk kita jadikan anak-anak kita ni more respectful? Is it, does, does it begin with us? You know, macam mana Ustaz? Yeah, I think... <laughs> I like you. I, I, I like how you started it just now. Something we tell tahu is it respect or fear? Sebenarnya? I think it's more fear. I remember my my dad. Kalau my dad ada satu kawasan kat rumah ni, dia simpan rotan, no? Okay, dia simpan, no? Tapi I know why it is. All he needs to do, if I do something wrong, he just needs to walk towards that direction. I dah lari bertempiaran, you know? Like so. Dia tak payah. In the end, tak payah pukul pun. He just did walk towards there. I dah takut. Nangis, no? So I think. I think it's um, it's a mix of both, but eventually you you know you get respect from your own children when you do as you say you would do, and this includes mm -hmm. telling them that if you don't study well, I will take away your PlayStation or something at the end. If you don't do your homework, I will not let you uh, watch TV. Like you need to be firm in the things you say. Kalau you macam 50-50, kesian-kesian. I think itu pun akan cause um, them to lose respect in you, right? So, uh, for 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 uh, between adults, respect is earned differently. And I think with our own children, it is earned differently. Mm. Um, another thing that I feel is very important, because we cannot assume that children already know what is the meaning of respect. Mm -hmm. So... I think investing a lot of time sitting down with them, maybe lepas solat, you know, to, to just explain to them, hey, you all must always respect people who are older than you, okay? Respect means what? Respect means you must do this, you must not do that, you must always uh, greet them like this, you must never uh, walk in front of them, just marangan, you know? Like, just teach them as much as you think you can. In, in those, like defining the whole idea of being respectful you know, tapi, and respect. Tapi nak kena buat regularly, like maybe mm. every week, repeat the same topic, tapi give different mm. examples. Mm. And then, and, and sometimes the more powerful examples are based on what happened this last week. Remember mm. that time, mommy and daddy tengah talking to our guests, tiba-tiba you keep on one, you know, calling us, calling us. That is not mm. very respectful, you know. Okay, mm. you know why? Because the guest is there and we are talking to them, giving attention, and suddenly you pull us away. It's not nice, right? You know, the guest, ke the guest came all the way to our house. So you, you can bring in, um, you know, incidences that, that happened recently, which they, they can vividly recall uh, because they mm. experienced it themselves. Mm. Um, so I think re repeated reminders and also lessons. Uh, um, mm. 
you can do them consistently, uh, mm. that will help them learn it faster. Mm. Now, I keep hearing this again, you know, routine balik. You know, you have to do it consistently. You know, macam you cakap tadi pun, you know, having that time to listen and to talk also, it's a routine. You have to do it consistently. Mm. So I guess you know it's, it's the practice that we put lah right? eventually dia akan masuk lah dalam jiwa anak-anak kita kan. Uh, yeah. Ustaz we have one question here. So I'm going to share it with you. Uh, Assalamualaikum. How do we make our kids get along together? As for my case, my first born is six year old boy and the second is a girl turning two years old in January. It's always about not wanting to share or play together as they have different interests. Uh, Ustaz ada experience tak dalam hal ni? Hari-hari. <laughs> Hari-hari. <laughs> My kids are all semua two years apart. And so amongst the two years apart, ada yang four years apart, ada yang six years apart mm. kan. So um, is there a challenge like this? Of course. But to me kan, I'm not so hard up on this. So I won't, I don't want you to worry too much, okay? Why? Because they're still kids. Benda-benda macam ni, I always say, it's not something very extreme. They just can't get along because kids being kids, whatever that they tengok abang dia main, dia nak. Bila abang dia tak nak main, dia tak nak. Kan? It's like that. Bila si adik tengah main, dia nak. Bila adik dia dah lose interest, dia pun tak nak. They just <laughs> like that. You know? like whatever that the person has is looks shinier. I want that. Sebenarnya kita ada macam itu ya, perangai kita. Yeah. But, so you, you know, yeah. we, we just want what the other person has. When the other person is no longer interested, we, we say, I'm also not interested anymore. So don't don't overthink this. Don't worry. Um, they will grow out of it, lah. There will come a time when they will, inshallah, enjoy uh, playing with each other, enjoy their, you know each other's presence. Um, which are my my two boys, they are the ones that are like two years apart. In the they are the two in the middle. So at other times they fought. They fought, of course. But now they they seem to enjoy so much playing with each other. They can play anything and everything. And like imagine, use their imagination. You know. They play like, lari together. They play video games together. Like they like to do things together. Dulu kecil gaduh banyak, gaduh banyak. But now they are six years old and eight years old. They are they are improving. So yeah, don't worry too much, okay? Hmm, betul lah tu start. Eh? Kita sendiri pun dah dewasa ni pun kita tengok apa orang ada kita pun hmm. nak. Kita nak ada kita pun dah letak tepi dah <laughs> kan. So so yeah, I guess. Uh, Uh, I think I think that that uh, boils down again to you know uh, maybe uh, using those times to also respect each other's uh, interests and things like that. Can I check up? So I hope that you're uh, happy with to start uh, sharing uh, and thank you for this, that question again. Um, I think kita oh ada lagi satu lah soalan. I baru je nak end. Ada satu lagi komen daripada virus ni. Boleh ya Ustaz? I think this is not a question I, I bet you. Uh. Getting, getting into early childhood education makes me unlearn and relearn a lot. That's true. I have four beautiful nephews and nieces. I hope I can allow them to experience a better childhood and teenage years. Trying to become the cycle breaker. I must admit I'm guilty for spoiling them. Yeah. So thank you, Virus, for that comment. Um, it's okay. I think kalau you auntie or uncle, kan, you can get away with it a bit. Ah. You will really spoil them a bit. Ah, kan. The kalau parents yang susah sikit. Uh, but I think it's also nice for you to not disrupt their parents' punya parenting style lah. Macam, if they have been trying to teach the children uh, about patience, about going against instant gratification, tapi tiba-tiba you asyik datang je kasih jurang whatever they want, kacau mm. jugalah kan. So I think... Itu pun challenging juga tu. Mm. Betul. So I think it's good for you to have a conversation with your sister or your brother um, to say, eh, hey, is everything okay? Lah? Kalau I, for example lah, macam... I nak belikan jorang ni boleh tak? Uh, so macam my my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law selalu gitu. Jorang they want to buy kid, buy stuff for my kids. Jorang tanya dulu. Eh, this one macam I think Hannah would love this. Uh. Can I get this for her? And then we can decide. Uh, I, no lah, I don't think we need that right at the moment. But there are times we say, okay, can. Uh, dia tengah sekarang into that thing. and yeah. So that could be one way, Fairuz. Uh, communicate with their parents. Ask them first whether they would welcome it or not. Yeah. Ya, kalau boleh cakap dengan aunty dengan uncles ni masih perlu cakap tapi kadang-kadang dengan grandparents tu susah sikit Ustaz. <laughs> <laughs> Itu untuk satu perbahasan lain lagi. <laughs> Itu perbahasan lain. Thank you Pyros. Thank you everyone for your questions. I think uh, we're going to uh, end today's conversation or tonight's conversation. 
uh, I hope, we hope that you've uh, gotten some uh, takeaways from today. Tapi kalau boleh, I nak summarize a little bit lah. Kan? Uh, and and how, uh, you know, we can all be better parents and treat our kids right. Uh, so macam Ustaz kata tadi, you know, based on Ustaz sharing and experience, uh, respect is basically, you know, doing what you say rather than, you know, putting in that fear factor, whatever that is. I guess macam mana pun children will look at us as that role model and today we want to talk about really building that kind of role model lah. And, and it starts with you. So if you say something and you're, you're apa orang kata, you have to set certain boundaries, kind of start. You have to be mm-hmm. clear in, in uh, your communication. You have to tell them, make them understand. Do as you say you would do. Betul tak Ustaz? Mm, and uh, establishing some routine that uh, you can, you know, talk to your child, pick up from relatable instances yang baru jadi so that they can constantly be reminded of the things yang dia patut buat atau tak patut buat. Uh, but I think it's very crucial to also find that time, that right time, bukan waktu you tengah marah ke apa kan Ustaz? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, also we talked about, uh, you know, being better listeners to our children. Maybe we could yeah. um, establish a time, you know, without distraction. Uh, yang ini kena letaklah telefon, telefon kat tepi sikit. Kalau susah sangat nak letak, letak telefon ni Ustaz, dia kena beli yang apa, squid game punya doll tu. Kan? <laughs> Kalau bukan <laughs> telefon, dia kena tembak. Uh, so, uh, nah, kena kena letaklah devices tu kat tepi sekejap and establish that as a routine because whether or not your child actually speaks to you at that time, they will learn and they will know, uh, you know, for sure that you are going to be there for them. Yeah? And and this is what we want. We want them to be able to come to us first. Betul tak Ustaz? If they were yeah. to, you know, Uh, have anything lah. Um, yeah. And apa nama ni, maybe Ustaz, maybe uh, you know last advice you'd like to give to us uh, tonight before you leave us, uh, you know on on how we can uh, treat our kids better, be better parents? I think with, I, I, first of all, thank you for summarizing it very well. Uh, I'm amazed that you you took down notes macam almost verbatim, walaupun <laughs> you like dengan pen aja. But um, I think I would say this, no matter what the methodology you choose, I hope you take into consideration your child's long-term well-being, not just the immediate, number one. And number two, however that you wish to speak to them or correct them or reprimand them or scold them, make sure that it always comes from a place of love, not complete rage and anger and aggression you know, it's not very nice. I think as long as it always comes from a place of love and position of love, if the children don't get it now, one day, inshallah, they will look back and they will say, hey, actually, I think my parents, my mom, my dad did it because they love me. Yeah, to me, that's the most important thing. All right? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Star. I think that's, uh, you know, beautifully, you know, ending the, the session with your advice. And I would also like to remind myself and everybody else, parenting is a journey. Never give up on your child, no matter what. There's always time for you to be better at being parents and also create your better bond with your child, inshallah. So with that, we hope you enjoyed tonight's session. Thank you so much, Ustaz, for being again with Thank us. You. And guys, uh, don't, forget, uh, don't forget to you know check out uh, Keto Care's services. If you ever need the services, please um, contact them, drop them a DM or text them, you know, or, or let your friends and family know. So, like Fairuz, you are the nieces and nephews, can. So, maybe let your siblings know that, hey, you not take a break, apa, uh, you can always contact Kido Care, inshallah. Okay? So, lah, uh, malam ke, siang ke, dua jam ke, weekend ke, boleh. And if you know you have, uh, you know, lady friends, women out there who are seeking jobs uh, or, or looking mm. at ways to complement your income and you've been affected mm. through COVID and things like that, we are always here to welcome you to be part of our care team. We provide you with the training, we handhold you so that you become, you know, a, a caregiver, you provide love and care for other children. Because we all know how it is, you know, every parent also needs support. 
and mm -hmm. uh, you know by by helping parents out you will also be making inshallah decent income for yourself so please you know tell everyone about that and, and go over to our website and before we end tonight we start i just want to share with everyone uh, a short video on how you can get to do castle. Tonight, mom and dad are going out on a dinner date. We'll be staying at home with Ka Ali. Ka Alin isn't just an ordinary sister. She helps me get my homework done. And we get to play our favorite games with her too. Being with her makes us feel comfortable and safe. So aunties and uncles, if you're looking for a fun sitter like Ka Alin, contact Kiddo Care or place a booking on their website at www.kiddocare.my. Okay, get your Ka Alin's www.kiddocare.my. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Bye, everyone.